Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be working on this Nintendo Switch OLED board and I bought this board off eBay for £43.99. It's a donor board, it's been declared as unfixable but one of the things that I find quite often with these when I buy these boards as donor boards is that I can actually fix them. One thing that one person can fi can't fix, it doesn't mean that someone else can't fix it so I never claim that they're unfixable but Basically, I bought these because I've got a graveyard of donor boards for normal Nintendo Switches and Switch Lights. You know, different variations of the board, different models, etc. But I haven't got any donor boards for the OLEDs. And the components on the OLED are the same as on a normal Nintendo Switch. It's just that they're in a different position. So when I'm working on devices for customers or, you know, if I've bought a device to fix and try and resell, then realistically, to save time, I want to be able to just say, right, I need this component. It's in this position. Let me just grab a donor board and I can grab that component directly from that location. It makes life a million times easier. So that's the reason I bought them as donor boards, but I do like to try and fix them as well. I do have this one. I've already worked on one. If you haven't watched part one, I do recommend checking that one out. I'll leave a link up in the top corner to that. But I've already worked on one. This is board number two of potentially four, at least three, but potentially four. This one's incredibly liquid damage, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be working on it yet. But the other, the other Switch board I paid £35 for, and that's on the way. So with that being said, my name is The Coder. I am an electronics repair technician, and I also teach people how to do it on YouTube teach people to fix their own boards at component level. So if you do want to learn more about fixing PCBs at component level, then be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. If you do want to support me, there's some support links in the video description. I really don't shill Patreon often enough. So I have got a Patreon page. You can check them out in the video description, patreon.com forward slash the coder. And you can support me over there, or you can head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account that you've already got to Twitch and then subscribing to my Twitch channel for free. It doesn't cost you anything apart from a couple of minutes of your time every month, but it does massively help me out, and I really do appreciate it. So with that being said, let's get into this repair. So like I said, I don't know what's wrong with this. This is purely a donor board. I've bought it off eBay as scrap. That's a M92 chip, that's dead. Um, but it's not off this board, it's off the last video that I've just done. But basically, this is missing a couple of components and also there's quite severe trace damage on the USB type C port. So what I'm going to do first, before I actually go to work on the type C port, I'm going to put these components back. So let's go under the microscope because unfortunately without these components, I can't even test it. So I'm going to grab a donor board first and foremost and I'm going to drop some of these chips on. So I'm going to go into my switch graveyard and you might notice the orientation I've got this board with the you know this little L-shaped thing here down the bottom. The reason for that is because when I hold a normal Nintendo switch board I want it in this orientation right because if you look here we've got three capacitors here we've got a capacitor down here albeit it's in a different direction but that is the orientation, so pin number one is this top left hand corner and pin number one here is this top left hand corner, so that's the way that I always hold these boards just to make it easier for myself, so I'd be having to turn the chip around and things like that. But basically what I want to do first is just pull this M92 chip off. So I've got my hot air set at 420 degrees Celsius, 40% uh, airflow. I do tend to go a little bit lower on the temperature when I'm working on switchboards because they're pretty thin and we don't really need that much temperature to get the chips off. As you can see that came off pretty quickly. I'm going to drop this chip in position. So this is the only problem when you're buying donor boards is chances are it's going to have some missing components. Generally if they've got BGA chips missing I don't tend to try and repair them because I don't want to sit there wasting half an hour reboarding a chip just to find out it's completely dead with a dead CPU so that's not actually oriented properly I can see that there's an angle on the solder joints so I'll just add a bit of fresh flux here so flux that was already on the board 
the problem is as well is I haven't tinned the pad, so I haven't got it, got the you know added ability of surface tension. In fact, you know what? I'm going to tin the pads. It's going to make my life a million times easier long run, in the long run. The problem is if I haven't got fresh solder on there, surface tension is not going to be my friend. It's just going to say, nope, go away. I don't like you today. I'll just tin those pads, and then I can just drop the chip on, and it should align itself. So you can see how the chip's springing back. That's because surface tension is pulling that chip in. And if I press down on the chip, squeeze out that excess solder. And then just add some more flux. I can just get rid of these bridges. So I don't need P13 to be on there. But I may as well put one on anyway because I've got a donor board in front of me. So even though it's not needed, I may as well do it anyway while I'm here. The board's still warm. It's going to take all but a couple of seconds to put on but, but fun fact you don't actually need a Pi 3 to actually get the console to boot but it's just going to save me having to come back to it later that's all so with this one the orientation is correct again I like to use the drop method when I'm removing these chips so I'll just heat up the chip and pull on the chip a little bit Lift the board off the table slightly and it'll just drop off. There we go. Surface tension is not my friend on this one. It doesn't matter. These are fairly easy to align. Beep you bastard. Thank you. Should add some flux I think. There we go. It's not quite aligned though. Let's just see if I can move that. It was aligned enough to actually work, but I'd rather get it right first time. There we go. That's good. So, just because this is a donor board, I'm just going to double check these components that I've just put on. Just make sure we've got no shorts. There's no short there. And oh, I'm a bit of a moron. I've left the bridge. And that chip shorted anyway. <laughs> that chip's bad. Damn it. Well. Now we've got to do that all over again with another chip. Never mind. How did I miss that bridge? I bet there was a few people shouting at the screens. I should probably wick this away. There we go. So let's read in that again. I'll grab another chip, but I'll grab one out of my bag instead. Okay, there we go. And damn it. <laughs> I've done it again with that bridge. Wow, it's just really not going to plan, is it? Well, I'll knock my airflow right the way down then.
I need to grab this with my left hand. There we go. And then I'm going to have to wick this away once again. <laughs> oh, this is getting annoying now. Oh, wait. I'm sorry, Mr. Capacitor, but you belong on this Nintendo Switch. There we go. Finally. Right, okay. So I used this donor board here for that. So now that's done, I'm not going to worry about cleaning it up or anything like that. They get ultrasonic clean before I actually sell them anyway. So not really a major issue. But what I want to do now is just test this and just see if it actually boots up. So I've, I've got about 50% charge in this battery. So I know that the battery's fine. So I should just be able to hook up the screen and the power button and just make sure that it boots up pop a battery in there and attempt to turn it on and yep it looks like it is booting up no parental controls good and yeah everything appears to be working there so as you can see here this is pretty badly damaged right if we just zoom in here i'm going to heat up this area just to get rid of this flux Okay, so that's nice and clean. I can see what I'm doing now. So the first thing I'm going to need to do, because I've got to obviously restore these traces, but the first thing I'm going to need to do is just expose these pads here. So this one here, this one. I'm not bothered about this one or this one because they're just ground pads. So I'm not bothered about those, but the rest of them I need to expose these, what they're called, what are called wires, um, apart from these two, which are the voltagein. But I need to expose these wires here so as I can run a jumper wire to each one and restore the connection. So I'm going to use my grinding pen. And this is incredibly small, so... I'm going to be careful here. So what that's going to do is just allow me to solder some jumper wires to these traces and restore the connections the top one, I didn't actually see that one I'll do that one as well really handy having a grinding pen for these scenarios there we go so that's that so now what I want to do is just tin these so as they can actually accept a jumper wire so, so as it basically allows me to solder to it so I'm going to add some flux and I'm going to use leaded solder, Kesta leaded solder. So I'm going to tin these pads here. It looks like these pins are still stuck to it on some of these, maybe, I think. I'm going to add some leaded solder. Yeah, I think there is a pin there. There you go, I got it. There was one stuck there as well. It's stuck inside this ground leg now. So what I can do with the ground leg is just use a bit of hot air with it. And 
that didn't go to plan. So I'll do it from the back. So actually, the best thing to do here is to add leaded solder to it. That will lower the melting temperature. There we go. And then I can wick the pads away. Or the ground holes, should I say. So there's one. And again, that one didn't go to plan. Let's just get some hot air to assist me. Yeah, they don't really want to clean out, do they? Yeah, they've been a bit of a pain. I can deal with those later. It's not a big issue at the minute. I think those pins that were damaged and left there have gone, so I'm not really worried about the rest of it. What I want to do is just restore these traces, so I'm going to add some flux, and I'm going to tin these pads at the bottom. And so it looks like we've got one pad that's not missing and then the rest of the pads on the bottom row are and there's one pad on the top missing as well. So what I need to do is I need to run some jumper wires and I'm actually going to add some leaded solder back to one of these ground legs here because I can use it as what I call a buffer for tinning my jumper wires so if I add some leaded solder just like that then I can grab my jumper wire because the jumper wire is enamel coated but I can grab my jumper wire and just use this ground leg here rather than having to keep going back to the piece of solder I could just use this to actually tin my wire. And I can always clean it up later on. But what I want to do is just run a jumper wire from the pad to the bottom of the port. I'll start off with this one. And the the key to this, the trick to this, is to use a decent set of tweezers because you want something that's going to actually be able to grip the jumper wire. Bear in mind it's 0.17 millimeters this jumper wire I'm using, and I don't want to keep on losing the grip on the jumper wire. So if I just take a little bit of that solder. And just solder that there. So I can use the tweezers to hold it in place. I don't want a big thick blob of solder on the jumper wires. But I do want enough so as it's going to hold the jumper. Honestly, I'm just being overly fussy here because this jumper doesn't even matter. This is a ground jumper and there are two other ground points on the port connected to the same sides. So those are irrelevant, but I might as well restore at least one. I'm just going to trim that away. There we go. And then I can move on to the next one so if you look now I'm going to be soldering to these wires which I've exposed I do want a little bit of a overhang on the top of the wire because I'm going to be adding something called called conformal coating in a minute 
And what that'll be is basically a glue for PCBs, which will hold the jumper wires in place and prevent me from knocking them off when I use hot air to solder the new port on. I'm going to break that away. There we go. And you'll find that you're not going to be able to see very well because you're going to be burning the flux quite a, quite a lot. So I just like to heat the flux up every now and again so I can continue to see what I'm doing. There's a little bit of a reflection on here. If anyone can recommend me a polarizing screen for a, um, for, the, for a microscope, for an optical microscope, I would gladly buy one. If anyone can send me a link to AliExpress. I just have to get that partially in place so as I can grip it with the tweezers. Whoops. That didn't work, did it? So if you don't grip it with the tweezers really close to the end, you're going to find yourself struggling. So, if I can, I like to solder it partially in place first. This time it didn't work, but most of the time it does. But the trick here, well, one of the tricks that I use is to grip the jumper wire really, really close to the edge. That way then... You know, I've got nothing causing me to shake and move the jumper wire about, and it just allows me to do it a lot quicker. So I'm not going to make you sit here and watch all of this. I will fast forward through some of this now because otherwise we'll be here for the next half an hour with me rambling on about random irrelevant crap. So I'll fast forward through this. I'm going to get these jumper wires run, and hopefully this will work at the end of it. And unfortunately, my soldering iron has just decided that the handle is no more. It doesn't want to live anymore. Uh, <laughs> I need to fix it, but I need a soldering iron to fix it. So, I'll do that another time. I'm going to use my micro pencil for now. It's probably easier with the micro pencil anyway. Because the micro pencil is obviously a lot smaller. So yeah, just sort of chime in there and say, uh, explain why I'm changing my iron tip. Uh, I'll continue. And there we go. So that's pretty much all done. What I need to do now is just clean it up and then I can add some conformal coating. Just to secure these jumpers in place while I drop a port on. It's not so much for protection, it's more just to stop the jumper wires from falling and obviously knocking themselves out of place. So you can see they're fairly solid right now because I've got enough solder on all of the joints. So they're solid enough to the point where they're staying in position but if I try and drop a port on there they're all just going to fly off. I'm giving that a pretty rigorous scrub actually and it's not, you know, none of them jumper wires are moving. They all seem perfectly happy where they are. And it's just typical that my soldering I decided to die during, well, quite frankly, a very fragile time. But, you know, it is what it is. Not really a lot I could do there. It, to be honest, it's already broken once and I've repaired it, so I think it might be time to get a new one. But if I can fix it, then I will. Not a new iron, just a new handle. Okay, so we only need enough jumper wire on these to actually make contact with the pad. So that appears fine. And yes, I know they're not pretty, but you're never going to get these to look really nice if you're running 12 jumper wires. So I'm going to get some UVH900 conformal coating. I'm going to drop it off just to the side here. So just a little blob there. That Trust me, that's a tiny blob. It's not as big as you think it is. <laughs> that's what she said. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's too much on that tweezer. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to coat all of these at the top. A lot of people like to put conformal coating across the entire jumper wire. I don't like doing that because... 
I want to make sure that it's going to be able to make contact with the pin and I don't want to have to waste time scraping back the coating that I've just put down I want just enough to secure these in place and hold them in position nice and firmly and that is enough well apart from that one add a little bit more to the edge here there we go perfect and that's plenty that's all i need so i'm going to grab my uv light and i'm just going to sit it on top of the board just like that and i'm going to let that cure for around about a minute okay that should be about ready let's pop under the scope and what i'm going to do is before i actually work with this any further i'm going to use a bit of hot air along with the uv light so that'll just make 100 percent sure that it's cured if you use a bit of hot air with it, it cures a lot faster and a lot harder. So I like to do it in two stages. But there we go, that's that done. And yes, that looks a mess, but you know, it's uh, hopefully going to be functional. So I've got some brand new OLED ports here. I'll just zoom out of there. And I've got some brand new OLED ports, and what I like to do with these is. I like to pre-tin the bottom row of pins just to make sure that we've got the best chance of getting a contact with the pads. I'll tin this top row as well. Just make sure there's a healthy amount of solder on those pads. I'll just zoom in and make sure I've got no bridges. And uh, nope, that's perfectly fine. So I'll hang this board over the edge of the table now. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tin these ground legs first. So I'm going to add some solder to these. I'm going to add some flux here as well just to make sure that we don't get any oxidized pads. Um, because I'm using my micro pencil, unfortunately, I'm going to have to use hot air alongside the soldering iron because there's no way I'm going to get the thermal mass on this with the micro pencil. Or at least I don't think I will. I'll try. I'd rather not use hot air along with it. Uh, actually, that's not too bad. I bet these ones are a little bit more difficult, though. It doesn't have to be perfect. The hot air, when I flow it down, will allow it to push the solder in. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that. So now what I'll do is, without a nozzle on, I'm going to heat up the underneath of the board. 440 degrees Celsius, 40% airflow. And I'm just going to basically flow this solder. And what you'll notice is this solder will just drop down. So that's why I said it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to keep the airflow moving, drop the port on. Move the port around a little bit because I want to basically wiggle it around so as it makes contact with the pins. And that's not actually in position. I'm going to make sure it's sitting flush. I've probably messed this port up, to be honest. I don't know if that's going to have melted the port or not, but I'll have a look in a second. So that should have sat down. It should be flush, but whether or not it's actually melted the port, because I've had to heat it up a couple of times, I don't know. It seems fine there. And it seems fine there as well, so that should be okay. There's a bit of excess solder on the bottom though. But obviously if there's too much solder on the ground legs, it's not going to sit flat inside the housing when it's screwed down. So I'm going to bring it on the table actually, rather than hovering. A little bit awkward. And this time I will use hot air with it, just to 
assist me with the heat transfer. I'm just trying to remove a little bit of this solder. Even if it means taking a little bit of time. Thin that out a little bit and that seems absolutely perfect to me now. So now I'll just clean up. Bit of IPA on a toothbrush. Does the job wonders. And this board is very hot right now. Let's just have a look at that. Is it sitting flush? I think it is. I'll come back on the table a little bit further because it's uh, a little bit awkward. I think it's sitting flush, but I'm just going to double check. And uh, now some of those pins are loose. So the top pins, or rather the back pins, the ones that you can't see, they should be soldered. The reason that it's not quite sitting flush is because of the jumper wires. They're a little bit higher than the normal pins or the normal pads rather. So just have to make sure that I solder these back pins. You're going to get sizzling because there's still IPA on there, but that's fine. And this is what I mean about the heat transfer. I'll deal with that bridge in a minute. In fact, I'll use that bridge to my advantage and use it as a buffer. Okay, I'm going to need some more flux on there. It's a little bit too much solder around here. Whoops, it's going out of focus. Or out of view, rather. And that went slightly off camera as well, sorry. And I've just lost a pad. Damn it. I think that pad was probably already damaged, but... Damn it. Nothing's going right in this video, is it? Sometimes that's just the way it goes, and uh, it is what it is. Right, let's have a look what I can do with this pad. Okay, I can run a jumper to that. That's fine. A little bit of flux there. Just add a jumper wire. Tried, tried to be fussy on that pad and now I've just messed it up even more. Wow, I really need to go to sleep. If you're just watching me for the first time, you're going to think I'm absolutely terrible at soldering. Right, now I need to stop being fussy. <laughs> because I'm just going to keep messing it up otherwise. Okay, right. That will do. Let's see if we get any activation on the charger. No. We do that side. But no activation on this side. Oh, damn it. Oh, that's annoying. All right, well, I'm going to pause it till the morning because it's 4 a.m. Well, never mind. Right, okay, it's the next day. It's actually like four or five hours later. It's currently 11 a.m., so... Six hours later, seven hours later, that's the one. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's not very long, and I haven't haven't had much sleep, so never mind. So let's just have a look and see why this isn't docking on one side. So I'll just get this in focus. I'm going to lift this port off. I'm going to try and save the port, but I probably can't. It is what it is. Hopefully the trace repair is not completely knackered, but we'll see. I'll just add some flux. Uh, yeah, pull the half of the traces off. Damn it. Actually, to be fair, that's not as bad as I first thought. It's pulled a few of them off, but not all of them. So it looks like some of them was just stronger than others, I guess. These things happen from time to time. It is what it is. 
there's four traces what need fixing which isn't too bad so the reason that it's not actually working i guess is because well these pins here are the data lines so i guess it just can't negotiate voltage so i guess i've got to break this conformal coating away here i can see where i've gone wrong i didn't put enough conformal coating around it it's fairly difficult to actually break the conformal coating and wow these pads really are so weak like, even the top ones all right so let's see what we can do now then about restoring these traces so if you hear any background noise it is the middle of the day and my kids are playing games running around you know uh life basically so apologize about any background noise so i just need to restore these pads there is one trace there but i'll deal with that in a minute okay we are pretty much done i think i'm just gonna clean this up and then i'll have a look at it i think i've got it all covered it's a little bit annoying when this happens because all of the work that you've done is gone for nothing basically but it does happen from time to time you know it's not going to go perfect every single time that's what you have to remember i think that is good enough i'd say so i need to put some more conformal coating down now just to protect it hopefully it'll protect it properly this time the problem is the last time i moved it around too much i mean it's good to move it around a little bit because that way you get a better contact on it but not as much as i did whoops so you know these things happen but it is what it is there we go i'm going to grab a new port i'm not going to use the old one and i just spilled coffee all over my board <laughs> i picked up the wrong cup i was using a counterweight uh well a cup as a counterweight and i've just picked up the wrong bloody cup damn it it's fine as long as the power is not applied to it i'll just dry that off i'm going to give the board a good clean in a minute because of the coffee i don't trust it i'm gonna to have to lift the shields off but to be fair i lift the shields off to replace the thermal paste underneath the copper tape anyway when i do refurb these so once i'm done i'll lift off the shields and make sure it's all nice and clean and i forgot something forgot to tin my port so because i'm using a brand new port rather than reusing the old one i need to tin it again that pin is missing that port's defective unless i've just damaged it but i don't know can't use that that one's got all the pins I don't think I damaged you. I'll have to re-watch the video, but it certainly wasn't a pin by the end of it. And that's not good. There we go. That's better. Right. Now we can actually try and get this port on. Everything has gone wrong in this video, but it's still going to get posted because that's how I do things. Whether things go wrong or not, you know, it's part of life. It's part of the job. And again, I forgot to tin the pads. What am I doing today? Not just today, but last night as well. Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong. Doesn't really matter so much about the back pads. It's the bottom pads, the ones that I can't get to afterwards. They're the ones that matter. Right, let's see if that dropped on okay. It seems like it might have done. Uh, some of the pins are loose, but I'm expecting it to be slightly raised just because of the fact that there's conformal coating under the port, but hopefully I can get a nice solid contact on these back pins. Beautiful. 
that is much better. The pads were certainly a lot more fluffy and better aligned in that one. I'm not going to press on them too much, I don't want to damage them, but they look connected to me. So let's just clean up. So I heat the flux up because it cleans up a lot quicker and a lot easier. It's not perfectly aligned by any stretch of the imagination, but you know what? It'll do the job. That looks a million times better. A million times better. So I'm going to remove these shields because, like I said, I spilt coffee and I'm not going to risk it. And I'm going to clean up this thermal paste. But like I said, I do clean up the thermal paste before they get sold anyway. So I'll just do it now and then I'll know it's good then. It doesn't really make much of a difference. And inside the port as well, because why not? I always recommend cleaning inside the port because flux will make its way in there. Right, moment of truth. Does it work? I can't see why it wouldn't work this time. Let's have a look. Okay, we've got 15 volts there. Let's turn it around. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Right, okay. Let's get this inside the housing. I'll give it a test and see what the deal is. So we are charging. Uh, that flickering on and off, that's perfectly normal on this charger. Okay. And let's test it the other way. Perfect. That's working fine. Now for the most important test. Is this going to dock? So... It's all well and good charging, but it's whether or not it's transferring video data, uh, especially considering we've changed the Poi 3 USB and M92. So I've got an extension cable here. This goes to my dock. Uh, it's like a male to female USB type C extension, well, Thunderbolt extension. Um, but that goes to my dock. Okay, it turns the screen off. And here we go. Is it going to display? And there we go, boom. So that's docking, absolutely fine. So yeah, docking's working absolutely fine. That is brilliant news. That means that the charging circuit is working perfect and we've got no issues with that at all. Uh, Poi 3 is working, M92 appears to be working. It is fast charging as well, so that's great to see. Uh, there we go, 0 0.6 amps. It's, it's almost a full battery, it's on 92%, so... Yeah, it's uh, it's not going to need to draw, you know, like 1.1 amps or whatever it is. It's perfectly fine how it is. Let's just connect up the internet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jerry-rig a antenna. I've got a PS5 antenna here, and this, uh, this has got the same coax connectors on it as standard antenna. Or rather, as the Nintendo antennas. I haven't got a OLED antenna, so... And to use that, it works absolutely fine. Just jerry rig it up. So let's just make sure Wi Fi works and it picks up my Wi Fi. Uh, I should probably plug the speakers in just to make sure they work. Okay, and I didn't actually check Joy Cons, but they are connected, so that's good news. Let's just test. Yep, it works on wireless Joy Cons, that's good. Uh, internet's working fine, audio is working. The only thing I can't test is a game because I don't have a game card module for these uh, Nintendo Switches, uh, the OLEDs. I need to buy one, but I will buy one and test it and make sure before it actually goes, you know, before it gets sold. I've got a couple more which I've got for sale that do actually work, so that's fine. I can test that another time. I am going to order a game card module, but at the minute I can't verify that. But everything else seems to be working fine, and this Nintendo Switch OLED, which, which was declared scrap, it's now fully working. That is great news. That means I can resell it and I can make a little bit of profit on it. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I will, of course, do my best to answer as always. And if you do want to support me, please check out the video description. You can become a Patreon supporter. You can become a Twitch Prime subscriber or you can use some of the Amazon affiliate links or just watch another video. That really does massively help me out. So that's going to be for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.